Hello, everyone. I have a very important message for you all today. This is Terminator 3 actress Kristana Logan, and she's got something to tell us about just how much cancer you're going to get from radio signals. I'm sure by now most of you have heard about the negative effects of Wi-Fi and the 5G network. It's carcinogenic. It can cause cancer. Not quite what the evidence shows, but continue. So we are exposed to massive amounts of radiation every day, but I have the answer for you. It's called the Zorb, and it looks like this. And believe it or not, this isn't actually a spoof. She's not actually hamming it up. This is only some two weeks ago on a YouTube verified channel. That that little button there, now nah, nah, that's going to stop you getting cancer from a uh, Wi-Fi. She actually sells those for about $100 for a pack of three. It absorbs 91% of the negative effects of radiation that surround us all the time. Now that is an interesting claim. Not that it absorbs the radiation, but it absorbs the negative effects of the radiation. And seeing as she just told us that the, the Wi-Fi can cause cancer. It's carcinogenic. It can cause cancer. So if it absorbs the effects of radiation, it absorbs cancer? put it on baby monitors even, smart TVs, routers, laptops, tablets, your cell phone. So stay safe, protect yourself and your loved ones. Get the Zorb. Go to kristanalokan.com and shop the Zorb in my mall today. Stay healthy, everyone. And if you're wondering how this amazing little black sticker thing does all of these incredible things, I'll give you a clue. It can't. Okay, let's check. Kilo of penny chews. Kilo of Velveeta. That's exactly what you need to prove how dangerous 5G actually is. And, and the first clue is maybe that if your device relies on Wi-Fi to work and you absorb all of that Wi-Fi, it's not going to work anymore. So you've got two options. You can either not buy a baby monitor or if you're a caring mompreneur like Kristana here, you can buy a baby monitor, then render it useless with a Zorb. Put it on baby monitors even. Or if you really care, you can render it five times more useless than that by getting a five times super strength Zorb for about a hundred bucks. Smart TVs, routers, laptops, tablets, your cell phone. Oh, that's a brilliant idea, Kristana. You should definitely get a Wi-Fi router, then install a device on it that absorbs all the Wi-Fi. Why didn't I think of it? It's so brilliant. Why are the pretty ones always so dumb? Your smart TV, your router, your cell phone, all can be rendered utterly unable to communicate. Ah, sorry. You can remove 91% of their ability to communicate simply by adding this little disc. And that's assuming that it works, which it doesn't. But Kristana here is hardly unique in thinking that there are boogeymen in things that she doesn't understand. Nobody has taken into account the cumulative radiation that we are all getting, especially children. Could where you carry your cell phone make you sick? Radio frequency emissions from the school's strong wireless network has triggered headaches, nosebleeds, and nausea. Radio frequency radiation are in fact cancer causing and are perhaps a cause of neurological diseases and cognitive problems and developmental problems. If I ask you how much more radiation does penetrate your body today compared to like 10 years ago? Well, it kind of depends what sort of radiation you're talking about. I mean, if you're talking about the modest penetration of your skin that solar radiation gets you, I mean, yeah, the solar radiation does actually get inside your skin somewhat then yeah, it's going to be basically the same because the sun solar irradiance is about the same as it ever was at about a thousand watts per meter squared. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the uh, radio end of the spectrum is like in total, but I do know that those cell phone towers there, they suck up between one and five kilowatts. So let's say three kilowatts on average. So even at that, if you're standing right next to them, eh, you're getting about as much heating from that as you would by standing in the full sunlight. And by the time you're a kilometer away from those cell towers, you're getting about a millionth of the heating effect from the cell tower as you would from standing in the sunlight. But come on, tell me why a millionth of the energy that you would get from the sun is terrible.
terrifying. Is it twice as much, three times as much? No, it's a quintillion times more. That's a one with 18 zeros. Really? 10 to the 18? A billion, billion times? Uh, compared to what? 10 years ago? Compared to like 10 years ago. I mean, I'd say I'm going to catch up so small the worms won't even have to chew. But that really just doesn't even begin to do this justice in this case. I mean, remember our guy there. He's a kilometer away from the cell phone base station. And he's currently getting about a millionth of the heating from that base station as he would if he was standing in the full sunlight. So merely if I made that base station a million times more powerful, then he would just be getting as much heating from that cell tower as if he was standing in the full sunlight. Now let's go to a billion times more powerful, which would quite literally be like there being a thousand suns in the sky. That's just one billion times more powerful a base station. And that's nothing. Now all you gotta do is increase the heating level by another factor of a billion. And then, then Dr. Ollie's calculations here will be spot on the money. No, it's a quintillion times more. That's a one with 18 zeros. So it's really hard to go up against the power of this industry, even when you have the facts on your side. But wait, let's be nice to Ollie for a second here. Let's just assume that he's right and that there really is a billion, billion times more of this deadly cancer-causing radiation than there used to be. Well, that would mean that there should be a billion, billion times more cancer from this radiation than there used to be, right? Okay, so let's take a look at the cancer rates, full in the knowledge that these numbers include a factor of a billion, billion increase in the cancer caused by Wi-Fi and other EMF radiations of one sort or another. Now there's a gazillion of varieties of these devices out there on places like Amazon and eBay and the such like, but most of them are little more than metalized stickers. So this is just to give you some idea of how hard some people push this, this bullshit. And yeah, I mean, so this is on Amazon, but they're all over eBay and all sorts of other places as well. This one is the Pure Goods EMF Protection Cell Phone for Radiation Neutralizing Sticker Shield Blocker Anti EMF for all electronics, laptops, tablets, TVs. A 10 pack bundle sale for about $30 with, would you believe it, 770 ratings and a four and a half star rating. And look, it protects against nuclear radiation. Nuclear radiation. I mean, that was me thinking that, you know, you needed meters of concrete to protect against, you know, high energy ionizing radiation. But no, apparently these little stickers will do it. And they also, they'll, they'll jam your cell phone, your computer and whatever. And of course, it's a sale. They were originally $150 for these crappy little stickers, but now they're only $40. So what do they claim? They claim that there's damaged red blood cells that look like that and negative iron, healthy blood cells. And apparently uh, positive ions are generated by smoking cell phones, computers, and cars, while the negative ions are generated by water, anchors? Ships, maybe? Trees and thunderstorms. And each sticker uh, tested for high negative iron content. It generates lots of negative ions, to which the answer is nah. Nah, it, 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 can't, it can't. You can't get negative iron generation because eventually, if all your negative ions leave, that means that what's left is only positive ions and sooner or later, there'll be an almighty flash, a big bang, a thunderbolt, and uh, lo and behold, uh, electroneutrality will have been restored. Uh, yeah, eliminates up to 99% of radiation, uh, which, okay, is sort of true in that it's a sticker and you can't see through it. Therefore, it has absorbed all of the visible radiation that is falling on it. 
Um, so yeah, this you, you could make claims like this of a piece of paper. Um, and look at that happy EMF protected family. Look, no nuclear, no nuclear radiation there. Even though uh, it's, this, this is where it's just so stupid. Nuclear radiation is, you know, X rays, gamma rays, that sort of thing, which are a, a billion times more energy per photon than the uh, Wi Fi being given off by the laptop. Uh, yeah, are your friends and family protected? Do you experience fatigue, headaches, brain fog, and stress? All are symptoms of EMF exposure. Odd. Um, I'm exposed to EMF all the time, and I, I get none of those symptoms when I'm exposed to EMF. And the solution. Our stickers emit negative ions which negate the effect of these radiations. It's not magic. It's science. No, it's not. It's a scam. They're just little metalized stickers. At best, they're little metalized stickers. You get nothing more out of that than you would for sticking a little piece of aluminium on the back of your cell phone. And like I was saying, the way she's holding it at the moment actually doubles her radiation exposure. I mean, if you just say, um, let's say that she's got her positioning nice and that the transmitter is here. Normally, the transmitter is sending out in all directions and where it's um, so previously, half the signal would have gone this way, half of the signal would have gone this way, and now all of the stuff that would have gone this way is reflected back in her face. It has doubled her radiation exposure. Some actually increased RF, doubling the radiation when used like this, with the shielded front flap open, folded behind the phone, like many people use flip cases in the real world. <laughs> all of this... Is small potatoes compared to the most ballsy of these Wi-Fi blockers, which claim they can not just put a shield around you, but around your entire house, just by plugging it into a USB power socket. So in order to understand why all of these things are bullshit, so you've got to understand what 4G is, what 5G is, and what radio waves are, and how they work. So you start off with the visible spectrum and then you move off the visible spectrum into the infrared. And there I can sort of show you with a thermal camera that can actually see in the infrared what stuff looks like. So some things that appear black in the visible are transparent in the infrared. So this is just one of the nice examples. Is you get a black polythene bag and of course it completely obscures things to the visible. But the infrared it makes almost no difference whatsoever. And some things that appear black in the visible are actually fairly decent mirrors in the infrared. To really highlight that, here I've got a nice piece of glass and yeah, it gives you a nice good view of what does you blow up on what's happening on my hand. And in the infrared, you just get a mirror Hello, mirror. By lucky chance, I've got some sort of pyrophoric graphite here. Yeah, so graphene. Graphene's fascinating stuff. And uh, first of all, it's remarkably mirror-like. Very good mirror uh, in the infrared. It's also a fantastically good conductor. And these are general properties that you can extend all the way down to the far end of the spectrum this way, which goes down through microwaves and into radio waves. So some things radio waves will kind of go through. They're transparent to radio waves or partially transparent to radio waves. And some things radio waves reflect off really strongly. Now, one of the things they reflect off very strongly, of course, is metals. And this is how radar works. Now, the light that we're looking at here is called non-ionizing radiation because there's not enough energy in the photons to break the chemical bonds. If, however, they're absorbed by something, there is enough energy in these photons to make the molecules spin faster. They heat up, cook it. In the case of microwaves, quite literally so. So that's all of the 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, radio and microwaves type stuff. All they can do is make the molecules in your body spin somewhat fast, which eventually translates into heating. 
Now, heat is heat. It makes no difference whether it's generated by rubbing your hands together or microwaves. But the minuscule amount of heating that you get from things like radio waves is farcical. Now, radio waves interact with metals in eh, funny ways, which is basically what allows it to act like an antenna. But people aren't made out of metal. So basically, the only way that you can detect that people have absorbed this radiation is to look at the heating that's caused by it. And thankfully, I've got a thermal camera that will show you tiny differences in temperature. Now, a typical microwave runs at about 2.4 gigahertz. And if you're thinking, oh my God, that's the same frequency as my Wi-Fi. Well, you're right. The key difference between these two, of course, is intensity. A microwave gobbles up about a kilowatt, a thousand watts of power, whilst your router transmitter is about a tenth of a watt of power. So, yeah, absolutely. If you stand next to your Wi-Fi router for long enough, there is definitely a, a very small chance there'll be a detectable amount of heating there. So microwaves start in the Wi-Fi band. It's also what's used for 4G. And that goes up to about mm, 6 gigahertz, that sort of thing. And the 5G band goes from about 6 to 20 gigahertz, that sort of region. But let's start off with microwaves to begin with, because if you're worried about the signals from baby monitors, a microwave oven, a kilowatt of power, should probably invoke a grade 5 panic storm. In, in fact, what's that? Hang on. No, I've got breaking news coming in here. Apparently, we have live footage of Kristana Loken just finding out she's not put a Zorb on the microwave. <coughs> bad, bad Kristana. You used deadly cancer rays to cook your food, didn't you? Now, all the microwave is is essentially a metal box and a light bulb that makes microwaves. It's a little more sophisticated than that. It's actually called a cavity magnetron. But it's essentially what it is, is a light bulb for microwaves. And it's putting out about a kilowatt, a thousand watts. That's 10 of the old fashioned 100 watt light bulbs or about the heating rate of a kettle. Now, the metal box, of course, is highly reflective to these sorts of microwaves, but it's not perfect. So if you do put metal objects in the microwave, they mostly act as mirrors, but they will absorb some and that means they heat up eventually. The arcing and sparking and that sort of thing, and that's a little different. But of course, we're not interested in what happens with metals in microwaves. We want to know what happens to humans when they're subjected to these uber-dangerous death rays. Sadly, I was rather short of volunteers willing to be microwaved for this video, so I settled for a proxy. And the proxy that I settled for in this case was Velveeta. Why Velveeta? Well, it's about 50% water, which is sort of fairly close to the 60, 70 odd percent water in humans. Plus, it comes in nice slices like this. So I can actually open up the block of cheese and take a look at the heating patterns on the inside. So let's put some of this stuff in the microwave and see what the heating patterns are actually going to look like. Awesome. So that there is the thermal camera. And that there is the thermal camera reflected in the microwave. Beautiful. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a nice block of cheese fresh out of the microwave. No, fresh out of the fridge. And we're going to microwave it and see because we can go through it slice by slice, how this actually is heated up by the microwave. So, in he goes. Boom, here we go. 30 seconds on the clock. So I'm gonna stop it at 15, I think, just to take a look and see what's happened. 15 seconds. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that. Is that in focus? It is now. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. Oh, so it's, it's um, yes, you see the penetration at the corners. That is amazing. Okay, let's do another 15 seconds. 
And now... Is it still the same? That is so cool! <laughs> so, yeah, you start to see the, the, the microwave penetration through the block. Good. Oh, it is. It's toasty. It's toasty on the corners. So I'm, I'm curious as to... The top one is penetrated all the way around. So let's focus in a bit close here. There we go. So now you can sort of see the slices as you go through the block of cheese. That's so cool. Right, okay, let's give it another 30 seconds. Let's see, another. Let's go for 20, shall we? Let's be brave. I ended up with molten cheese here, I can tell. Okay, there we go. And, oh, it's, it's toasty now. And it is, it's toasty in the corners, and I feel it's not. So I'm going to call it quits at that. But let's take a look at our microwave penetration into the block of cheese. So you see that as you get down towards the center, that is so cool. That is awesome. Hey, it's melted on the bottom as well. I know. I get, there you go. So that's the penetration. Oh, and the last one is completely molten. That's amazing. Awesome. So now we have down here a metal box with some cheese. The cheese you will see on the thermal camera is there. It's cold. Uh, okay, I might have to hold it up a bit. There we go. There's the cold cheese um, I'm holding in my hand. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cold cheese in the metal box. And then I'm going to put the metal box in the microwave. And we're going to microwave it for... Uh, a uh, let's go for 20 seconds and we will see what happens, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is, the box is quite cool. Just putting something on the bottom to stop it from touching the bottom of the box. That'll do. Excellent. So it's not touching any of the sides in there. So what we expect to happen here, of course, is the metal is fairly reflective to microwaves. So what we're going to expect to happen is... Uh, it, it is it's essentially a mirrored box. It's not a perfect mirrored box, so... Well, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So let's go... Boom! And we might get some sparks in there. I'm not sure. And it doesn't look like we're getting a lot of sparks. There's not a lot of interesting happening there. At the 15 second mark. So let's give it a full 30 second whack, okay? And then we'll pull it out and see what our cheese looks like. So that's 30 seconds, and you will see. That bizarrely enough, the top is actually pretty hot. Let me get going on this. Let's start the recording. Okay. It's only just slightly warm to the touch. It's about the same temperature as my, my fingers. Now, let's see what our cheese looks like after 30 seconds. And the answer is pretty unmicrowaved okay uh, there's maybe some hints around the outside um okay so i'm going to put it in for another 30 seconds okay and then after this i'm going to take it out of the metal container and we're going to microwave it again and then we will see how much of that heats things up. You see there's quite a lot of 
reflective radiation in there, or it, it's warmed up quite a lot. This is only just warm to the touch. So if I actually just change the thermal range on the camera just a little, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so, and our cheese, <laughs> still <laughs> remarkably unmicrowaved, okay? So just for a comparison here, I'm gonna put the cheese in the microwave and we're gonna give it, oh, I don't know, 10 seconds or something. Okay, there's 10 seconds. And already you can see the cheese starting to, to microwave up on the top. Okay, let's give it another, another 10 seconds. Right, there we go. And right now you can again see, yeah, it's, it's warm to the touch. It's, it's like cooked. So cooked, cooked. You, and it's so funky that you get those little, little bits in the corner. And then as you get down to the bottom, it starts getting cooked again. I can feel it. These two are stuck together. And at the bottom. Awesome. So now comes the second challenge. Now, I know that the science says that this should act, right? The, the wavelength of the microwaves in here is about that long. It's like 10 centimeters or something. So this should, in principle, be an effective Faraday cage and mostly stop the microwaves from going through. That, of course, assumes that this is a sort of perfect conductor, which is not, and it's got an open top, which means that I'm going to have to put a top on there of some sort, which means, yeah, two close metal contacts. We're probably going to get some sparks here, but it should nonetheless be effective. So I've now got a new block of cold cheese. <laughs> yeah. All the best science is done with cold cheese. So just so you can see, uh, see how shiny the metal is in the infrared there. It's just as shiny for the microwaves. Okay. So. And this will almost certainly get excited. So let's go for 15 seconds in the first instance. We're almost guaranteed to get arcs and plasma in there. I'm not seeing anything. Okay, 15 seconds. 15 seconds and you can see that the cheese is remarkably uncooked. Um, it's not perfect. And how's this? This is not too bad either. It, it's warming up, but okay, let's give it another 30, 15 seconds. Okay, so there you go. This is after 30 seconds. So how hot is this? It's not too bad. Now you, where where the con where if you get contacts, you can get incineratingly hot. Uh, and the cheese is <laughs> remarkably unmicrowaved. Ah, there's the little, little elements of it, but um, in general, my little cage here has done a pretty good job of keeping out the the microwaves. So let's take him on for another 30 seconds. It's time to see if we're gonna. Anything exciting? I don't see sparks or hear plasma. It, it's quite common. Um, but. So this will mean that we've had a full minute in the microwave. And boom. And it's getting kind of toasty. How hot's this? 
Oh, this is hot to the touch. This is like burning in places. Okay, I'm gonna have to be gonna have to be a little careful there. And this is warm to the touch. As for our cheese. That's happened to our cheese. Are there signs? There are signs that it's starting to cook on the outside, but this is like after, um, what are we? We it, it had a full minute in the microwave at the moment. And just to emphasize how much of the microwaves um, have been kept out by this, this little metal cage here, I'm going to put the rest in And we're just going to give it 15 seconds. Okay, that's 15 seconds. <laughs> As you can see, 15 seconds without the Faraday cage versus a full minute with it means that hey, you get quite a difference. Good, so that's maybe a decent demonstration of the uh, horror of a thousand watts of microwave power. Now, optimistically, the transmitter on your phone is about a thousand times weaker than this. So as a random example, if you were to say microwave something for 40 seconds, that would give you an identical amount of power to about 40,000 seconds of using a cell phone, which is give or take 10 hours. So now you might think that that would cook your brain for certain except the body's actually quite good at regulating things like uh, uh, temperature. Your heart pumps some six liters of blood around the body per minute, which among other things, does things like regulate body temperature. I mean, your body, just when you're alive, generates about 100 watts of power. So when you're using a cell phone, it has to get rid of 101 watts of power. But you might think all of this is crazy because only a complete idiot would want to compare, say, uh, microwaving an egg for 40 seconds to using a cell phone. Take it away, Zorb. Hello, my name is Warren Jack from the Zorb. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how the microwave radiation can damage your brain. I'm going to do a simple test using an egg. I'm gonna put it for 40 seconds. Now just imagine your, your brain on a cell phone because we use the cell phone more than five, 10, 15, 20 minutes a day. Wow, oh, let's see, 20 minutes a day. That's uh, give or take about a thousand seconds. So that's the equivalent of putting your head in the microwave for one second per day. Or sunshine's about a thousand watts per square meter. So it's the equivalent of standing in the sunshine for about a second. We use it all day long. And now this little example is gonna give you an idea what radiation can do to the brain. Our product absorbs radiation. It's called the Zorb. It's made out of ceramics, magnetics, and has the ability to absorb radiation. Yet, <laughs> curiously, our resident genius here didn't think of the, uh, the rather obvious experiment of, say, for instance, putting his egg into the microwave along with his Zorb such that 40 seconds later, he can triumphantly pull out his egg uncooked. And it goes a little stuff like this. And the cheese is remarkably unmicrowaved. Like you see, the radiation just popped the egg in less than 40 seconds. And if you sat there thinking, this, this has got to be a spoof. No one could be this dumb. Well, I'm sorry, but I've got predictably bad news for you. This is a product. Be safe, protect yourself, absorb it. Of Wi-Fi and the 5G network. It's carcinogenic. It can cause cancer. But I have the answer for you. It's called the Zorb. No, it's a quintillion times more. That's a one with 18 zeros. So if you stuck it out this long, good on you. And maybe now's a good time 
to drop a thumbs up on the video and share it with your friends. Cool, so we more or less put the 2.4 gigahertz stuff to rest. What about the 5G? Well, in terms of heating power, it's basically the same. The 5G, however, is significantly higher in frequency. Give or take, it's mostly 6 gigahertz up to 20-ish. The effect of this is that it penetrates far less well than 2.4 gigahertz. So to demonstrate this, I've got a 6 gigahertz audio video transmitter here. That's at the lower end of the 5G band. Now let's see what sort of penetration we can get out of this boy. So here I've actually got a pretty powerful uh, 5, well it's 5 uh, gigahertz. That's uh, low 5G band type energies. And this is actually a super powerful transmitter. It's about uh, half a watt, 500 milliwatts, which means that this thing is for broadcasting video about a kilometer or so. Yeah, and so first thing I should do is show that it actually works. So it's part of an audio video setup. So what I need to do first is, let's just turn on my camera. We now need to give it some power, which is gonna be great, because this is gonna tell us how much power this thing actually consumes. We know it's only about a half watt transmitter or so. So I've scaled this up to about 10 volts here. Power is, of course, volts times by current. So you can see this thing, this thing sucks up like five watts. Only about 10% of which it manages to turn into a uh, radio signal. Now we're going to turn on the receiver. Boom. That should do it. Boom. So awesome. You can see these have infinite regress there as I transmit from my little camera here through my 5G transmitter to the receiver. And they're both on channel 33. So, this thing is sucking up the power, something crazy. So let's see what that looks like on the infrared camera. When we light him up. Boom. So there we go, straight away with our six or so watts this thing's pulling down. And you'll see it starts to cook up pretty quick. So, it passes oh wow look at that it's hotter than me already so now comes the real question how much is this this transmitter is belting off the the wi-fi yeah i can sort of see it in action that you've got your camera that's going into your 5g transmitter it's going to your 5g receiver who's sending out the signal and on the infrared yeah i can see that our transmitter is up to about 50 degrees Celsius already. Good. I think we have just about the perfect setup, which in practice means that you can't see almost anything on the thermal camera. And the reason you can't see really anything on the thermal camera is because everything is the same temperature, which is awesome. That's how it should be at the beginning. So you will see that here, um, it's only when I touch it, you can just see the thermal fingerprints that I leave. You can see that the transmitter is mostly cool at the moment. And this bit, which you can't see at all, is slightly reflective in the infrared, but um, the, bit, the reason you can't see it at all is because they're all at the same temperature and if I hold one for a bit you will see that that's just what a few seconds of holding it looks like. Good! So this means that we can now power on and see what happens. Power on! We'll give it a little while and see how it goes. So you see most of what's happening at the moment is just the radiative heating coming off this thing. You know, it's basically acting like a, 
a heater. That's, that's all that you're getting off it at the moment, uh, which is going to be fantastic because if it is just infrared, then it'll be absorbed by this piece of paper on the front and you won't get any heating into the back. <laughs> So that's 10 minutes. So let's go for another 10 or so. Another 10 minutes, okay? Awesome, so that's half an hour of whacking it with a fairly powerful 5 gigahertz AV transmitter so we can get rid of that now well there's some signs of, of radiative heating here I'm going to put the thermal camera on to the sort of narrowest thermal range that I can get right, just to give you some idea I'll be incineratingly hot on this oh look at that Signs of some penetration. So, um, the ambient temperature is about 24 by the looks of things. Directly underneath the transmitter, it got up to 26, two degrees of heating over half an hour. And this is about 25. Now comes the real test, right? What does it look like underneath? Okay, so let's get rid of the first row. In fact, now, now it's an interesting question, right? Has the heating gone all the way through? Hey, you can see what just me touching it does to it. Okay, I'm gonna have to do it this way. And not really. Maybe hotter on one side than the other, yeah? It's not helped by it's a bit shiny, but you can see quite clearly here that there's almost no penetration more than a centimeter or so in. So let's move them off to the side. Now for the main. So, right, so here we go. This is the Velveeta. So if it's just radiative heating, then of course there should be nothing really that goes through the paper. That paper would absorb all of the infrared and it looks like there is actually some modest heating there. So now we can go through this slice by slice. So it really does look like it's just one slice in and um, that's basically it. So the penetration of the 5G is, oh yeah, you see him, he's actually been cooked. Look at that! I've actually heated a piece of cheese up by about one degree Celsius over mm, half an hour. Meanwhile, if I let go of it, you will see that uh, eh, my fingerprints will do that in seconds. Right? This just gives you some idea of the sheer power of a, a decent 5G transmitter. So yeah, for those out there worried about the horrific power of the 5G and how it's going to kill you, you know, which it's going to do because it's got the power to maybe slightly heat up a slice of cheese over the period of half an hour. Yeah, for those folks, I'm going to love seeing your reaction the next time you think of doing something like drink a cup of coffee. Yeah, that delivers a little more heating. So yeah, basically 5G has neither the penetration nor the power to do really anything. Especially if you're talking about the power that you're going to be getting off portable devices. And what heating it does deliver is trivial compared to the amounts of energy that your body absorbs and radiates on a on a minute by minute basis. So if you found that awesome and interesting and you don't want to miss out on new uploads like this one, make sure you hit the notification bell. And if you really like videos like this and want to support this channel directly, you can do it through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.